All right, guys. This is part two of my story on Let's Talk About It. You know, a podcast gives a platform for real talk, real people, real topics, real conversation. So last time I, I left off at uh, my eighth grade. You know, I failed. Uh, I had to go to summer school. So, you know, that summer, you know, my mom signed me up for a summer, summer school program at Dobbins High School in North Philadelphia. So I was like, okay, all right, let me go there. You know, I had to take the bus and, you know, go over there in the hot ass, get no air conditioning classes, stuff like that, summertime, and still work at the same time. So one day, you know, I'm coming home from school, you know, after summer school, about to, you know, get dressed and go to work soon. I said, Louis, my mom, my mom said, Louis, I got to talk to you. I was like, what's up, mom? What's going on? So she told me to sit down. I was like, oh, man. Well, I was like, shit, what the fuck I do then? Right? So it was like, I got some news. Like, no, I had to go to the doctor. And, you know, I got some um, some, some test results back. You know, she had a a tumor in her brain. You know, uh, like uh, some type of form of uh, uh, brain cancer. And she had to have surgery to cut out the tumor. I was like, damn, I'm like, wait a minute, mom, what are you talking about? Like, you know what I mean? Like, are you be all right or whatever. It's like, no, I'm, I'm gonna be out of work for a while. I gotta get the surgery. And I was like, so I'm all concerned and shit. I'm like, what the hell's going on here, right? So, you know, she tells me that, you know, I'll be fine and everything like that. So I'm going to school, you know, go to summer school you know, trying to pass summer school, uh, you know, cheating my way through. I'm not going to lie. I did. I cheated my way through. They basically was giving the answers any fucking way. So, but, you know, I was talking to this girl in summer school. She gave me all the damn answers and I cheated my way through. But anyway, so it was right before my uh, ninth grade year, that the summer, right before my ninth grade year. You know, uh, at that time, uh, high schools in Philly went from 10th grade to 12th grade. But in ninth grade, I mean, it went. For, you had to go to junior high. I had to finish out my stuff in junior high because it was for seventh grade to ninth grade junior high. So, uh, so I started summer. I started Shoemaker Junior High School in ninth grade. At the same time as where my mom was going to have surgery, so she had the surgery because they had to go underneath the nose and go up to to the brain and take out the tumor. It was like, I think it was like 18 hour surgery or some shit like that. Scared as hell. Didn't know what's going on. But they told her she could be okay. So she was out of work for a long time. You know, it wasn't considered working as comp, you know, even though she worked for the post office. So it was disability. And back in the day, in the 80s, disability in Pennsylvania fucking sucked. Barely got any damn money. You know, my mom didn't really save up money. Um, I don't know what she did with it. I couldn't even fucking tell you. So shit started to get rough. You know what I mean, it started getting rough. You know, even before school, I couldn't really afford like brand new clothes to go to school or whatever. I still had the same old shit, you know, whatever. Even though I had a little job and, you know, whatever. I mean, but I still had the Jordans, right? But Jordans are older. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry, not the Jordans. Uh, yeah, um, you know, I, I had some nice little gear and stuff like that. Uh, you know, so anyway, that's when it started to get rough. You know, the first thing that went in our household was the heat. Uh, back in the day, we had like oil, like oil drum heat, like the oil, the, the big containers down in the basement. She couldn't afford to get it. So we ran out of heat. Uh, couldn't get the oil. We had no heat. Now, this is the fall, so it wasn't too bad. But she couldn't afford heat for months. Then it started to get colder. It started to get cold. So we had to do the whole little good time shit, open up the stove to warm up the whole downstairs. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, warm up the oven. I'm sorry, warm, to open up the oven. And we stayed downstairs. So as I'm going through the whole process of trying to get through school and coming home and I have no heat, my mom had to take care of my mom at the same time. Uh, you know, it was getting, it was getting more rough. The water was shut off. Yep. 
water was shut off. Couldn't could afford to really pay the bill. So they cut the water off. So imagine not having no running water, no heat. Ninth grade year, <laughs> that's what happened to me. So we had to like basically like borrow or get like pots and pans to get water from our neighbors, you know, to bathe in, to wash, to wash dishes, whatever. So my mom had to like, you know, apply for like, you know, back in the day, probably still have them now, or the EBT cars now, but back then it was food stamps. So we had food stamps and my mom would like, you know, give me something to go down to the store, go food shopping, I had to carry them all the way back, you know, food stamps. And then people found out I had food stamps. People found out I had no heat. People found out I had no water in the, in the house, you know, because the neighbors was talking. So guess what? I got ridiculed for that shit too. Got teased about that shit. So it's coming up to Christmas times, getting colder, still no heat. This is fucking months. We couldn't afford it. You know, <sighs> right before Christmas, right? Couldn't pay electric bill. You know, we had pet go. Got cut off. Got cut off. They had no Christmas anyway. You know what I mean? Could didn't have no tree. And the lights got cut off. So now let's recap. Didn't have no heat, didn't have no water, and didn't have any electricity now. With no Christmas tree. Still trying to, you know, do on the job tables and stuff like that. So then I got approached by one of the guys on the corner. Like, yo, we here, you don't got shit, my dude. You got nothing. Come sell for me. See, back then, uh, the crack ep epidemic was big time, okay? You know, crack was going around the inner city neighborhoods, the quote-unquote ghetto or some shit like that. And we was getting a lot of crackheads around. Everybody was getting addicted to crack. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you didn't have any money, you start selling drugs. Um, You know, uh, like, you know, the drug dealers give you like a, uh, a, bag, a bag of crack for 100, you get 40 off every 100. I thought about it. We need the money. We need we need to pay some bills. I didn't do it. First and foremost, I scared my grandma I'm gonna whip my ass because <laughs> she was tough. You know what I mean? Uh, my mom, I felt like she dis I would be a disappointment to her and all type of shit. I don't know what the fuck was going on. And I don't know if it was like a you no know, truthful thing or some shit. I don't know the fuck what what it was, but I just didn't do it. And I ain't had no clothes. I wasn't geared up like everybody else in school. People found out about it. Yeah, yeah, they was fucking with me. Now, again, no heat, no water, no electricity. So we finally get back up. My grandma finally helped us out a little bit. She was helping us out here and there. So we finally got the water back on. Okay? We still had no electricity heat. So past Christmas time, you know, that Christmas was fucked up. No Christmas, no gifts, no nothing. Then New Year's, we finally get the, the water back on. And like, you no, know, I'm going through school and and, and, and right, you know, everybody has the new gear and stuff like that, what they got for Christmas. And, and the other guys were, you know, starting to buy sneakers and gold chains and all that shit like that because they were selling drugs on the corner too. They're making like 40 off every hundred. And making selling selling hundred was real fast. You make you make that real quick, right? So I was like, shit, man, I can't do this shit. Like, I just can't. You know what I mean, I just, I don't know what it was. I just didn't do it. So we come up the whole ninth grade year, nothing, nothing. So then my grandfather at the time, uh, he heard about it. Uh, he gave us money to get the heat turned back on. You know what I mean? And the electric, everything was cool. So we, so we back up and running, right? My mom's getting better. I'm taking care of her, her and this and that. So I finally graduated from junior high, finally, going to high school. And I didn't make a decision. Either I'm going to Overbrook with the rest of my classmates or I'm going to go to West Philly High. You know, I was in the middle of both of them. You know, I said, fuck that, I'm going to Brook. So that's when it all started when, you know, when you go to Overbrook, right, you're walking. There's no buses, no school buses and shit like that. You walk in the school. Like, like we walk to school every day. Like when all parents tell us we walk to school 100 miles. No, we walk, I probably walk like 
overall like almost 10 miles a day, five miles up, five miles back. You know, it was tough. All types of weather. You walk in school, you walk with your buddies, it's all good. But back in those days, right, you got to be careful where you're walking. You know, and it was territories, a lot of territories. Like I was on Gerard Avenue side. You know, I was on Gerard Avenue, Thompson Street. But back then it was sections. You know what I mean, <laughs> you know, you ain't want to walk walk around like kind of like gang sections or whatever. Yeah, Parkside across the bridge. You had Lancaster Avenue. You had Lansdowne Boys. Uh, you had the Hilltop, which is right there on on Overbrook, Overbrook High. Uh, you had the uh, um, the, uh, the the Winfield Boys. Uh, you had the guys below us, Forty uh, Nine for Hoop Street. So everybody had their own section. So unless you're cool with that section, you cannot walk in that section. So we had to make like a map. You know what I mean, can't walk down this way. I walk this way. I walk up this way. I walk up that way. If you walk down a certain area, you get your ass kicked. You get jumped. You get beat the fuck up. Because it was like a lot of gang activity, I guess they call it, whatever. And if they knew you wasn't from that section, you get your ass whooped, you know, probably shot, killed, stabbed. Usually, was, usually stabbing back then. Or you get rolled on. So we had to walk in a certain pattern up the street school and walk back to a certain path, right? Fucking crazy. This is all started my 10th grade year. So my mom was getting better at the time. And then, you know, she met this dude. I ain't like this motherfucker. I ain't like him at all. Can't stand him. Couldn't stand nothing about his ass. I just couldn't stand him. You know, he was just a dick. You know, she started dating him. And then all of a sudden, I was totally forgotten. You no, know, he would come over. She's like, you know, uh, you know, cooking meals for him, doing all this, doing all that. You know, she's doing all this stuff. But she didn't do nothing for me. Basically, she just totally forgot about me, basically. Um, so at that time, like I'm trying to figure out like what's going on. I got no really no gear. I got I'm going to I'm going back to school. I gotta deal with my mom not paying me no attention. You know, she all about this dude. Uh, you know, when she cooked dinner, I'm coming home. I'm thinking dinner's for me. It's only for him. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. So we get to time. I'm like around 15. Uh, you know, the sexual ages. You know, curiosity. You know, what I mean, because back then there was no sexual education. You know, especially not here in the cities. I don't know how it was in suburbs and shit like that, but inner city kids, we ain't get no sex ed classes. You know, only the only sex ed class we knew was from Players Magazine. Not Playboy, we had players, all black women, or old porno at VHS, you know, that we might see and we sneak in and put it in and watch. <laughs> but no, no, whatever. So anyway, 15 years old. Uh, met this girl uh, that actually lived on my block. No, I've known her for a long time, so not really met, but she lived on my block. But she was older than me. You know, she was 19. So uh, I guess she started liking me for some fucking reason. I was 15. She was 19. Yeah, older women love me. Nothing I can do about it. You know, even back then. <laughs> so anyway, so she came to me and said, Louis, yo, I want you to come to my house. Like, okay, what do you want to do? It's like, I want to do it. I'm like, do what? We're going to have sex, dummy. Like, oh, okay. Uh, when you want me to come? Come over Saturday. This is Friday. I'm scrounging around and shit. I don't know what the fuck to do. I'm going to everybody. I'm asking fucking drug dealers in the corners. I'm asking the winos in the corners. Because they was like, probably like the father figures we didn't have. You come from a single mom, this and that. So you go on advice from them. Go figure that shit, right? So anyway, well, I run to my back in the day best friend, you know, John. It's like, yo, John, like, yo, what's up, man? Michelle asked me to come over. Like, to do what? Like, yo, she want to have sex. He was like, all right. So you ready? Like, nah, man. I, you know, I never did it. So after he started after he stopped laughing on the fucking ground and shit, because I was a fucking virgin at 15. I was like, come on, man. Whatever. What should I do? So he's like, all right, this is what you do, right? When you go up in there, 
you know, <laughs> you get ready, you stick it in, you go in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And when you feel like you got a piss, pull it out. Like what? Like, yeah. Wow. <laughs> now I'm 15, right? So I don't know the fuck difference. I was like, okay. You know what I mean, you know, I'm stupid, whatever. So that Saturday come, right? She sneaks me upstairs. Now, no, don't forget, she's 19. So she already experienced already. All right, I think, right? I get up there, do a little kissing. You know, my heart pounding like a like a mug, right? I'm scared as shit. Like, oh damn, what the? I hope I don't fuck up. So she kissing and this and that, and then whoop, I'm up, right? So I get on there, I get on top, and she's like, "Calm down, your heart all racing fast and shit." Like, all right, I'm scared, right? So I go in. First of all, I feel cold. Don't ask me why. I'm 15 years old. I don't know. So as I'm going, right, I'm like a little, like, ease it up and turn to a jackrabbit. 25 to 30 seconds later, I'm done. <laughs> Seriously, like, first time collapse done after 25, 30 seconds. I'm done. Like, I'm like a fish and shit clapping. She just, like, pushes me off her and shit. <laughs> it's like fucking destroyed. Yeah, you know I mean, probably some of you ladies probably been through that back in the day. Was one some dudes, whatever dude like that. I feel sorry because I was one of them motherfuckers. Yeah, you know I mean, <laughs> so I was 15 years old. So I did that shit, and uh, um, it was crazy. I didn't know what to do. I'm in a ball on a corner, all curled up in a ball, like like shaking and shit. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to feel. So I just oh, she, she kicks me out and shit. So, you know, I'm going to school and, you know, I'm thinking, okay, I'm not a virgin no more. I'm, I'm cool. I'm straight. I'm, I mean, you know, I'm the man. I'm a man now, right? Man. So six weeks later, right, I come home from school. Her, the girl, her mom, my mom, and my grandma was on the fucking couch. I'm like, shit, what the fuck did I do now? My mom comes up. The first thing she do smacks the fuck out, <laughs> right? Like, like, what the fuck I do? She fucking pregnant. I ain't taking care of this fucking baby. You gonna take care of this shit, whatever. Like, oh my God, what the fuck? I'm 15 years old. 15. First time having sex, I get somebody pregnant. At 15. Under 30 seconds. Can't make that shit up. Gotta be a Guinness World Record. It's gotta be. Gotta be in the world record book. Something, right? Anyway, so at the time, you know, uh, both moms were talking and they had to think about it. I was underage. My daughter's mother wasn't. She was older. So they start fighting. And then it comes up, I could I can't see my daughter. I couldn't see her. Because a year later, she was born. I was 16. Pennsylvania law. Can't see her. For a male. An underage male. Look it up. It's crazy. Couldn't take care of her. Couldn't see her. My mom and her got in an argument. They was like, I could, I could press charge with her for rape or something like that. For whatever. Like, no, no, no. It was my first time I made up to it. Didn't see my daughter for two years. Didn't see her. My mom was like, nope, you're not going to see her. You're, you're, you're still, you're still in the age. I could press charges, state law, whatever. Told me to look it up. I looked it up. It was something to that effect. So I see my little girl for two years. Two years. Two years. That's another, that's another part of the story later on and I'm thinking about that shit and she's not here anymore and I, I mean think about it now man like I missed the first two years of her life you know the terrible twos holding her and shit you know it fucked me up fucking me up now. I'm actually thinking about that shit. It's crazy, right? I was underage. 
My mom's like, no. No. So within those two years, you know, I was 16 years old. So I had to deal with that. So at this time, I guess my mom was getting serious with this dude over a year or whatever. This is like two weeks after, no, I'll say a month after my mom said I couldn't see. But I, I, no, after she was actually born, a month after she was actually born. Then her boyfriend comes over, the guy I didn't like. We get into an argument for some fucking because I never liked this motherfucker. And I guess I was angry or upset my mom. I couldn't see my daughter. And I took it out on him. And I went after him. I fucking went after him. He said, try to be like my dad had said. So I just went after him. I, I put my hands on him. I'll try to choke this motherfucker. He pulled, she pulled me off. My aunt was there. She pulled me off. He, he drove away. And... I never forget it. My mom said, if I lose him, I'll, I don't have a son. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said, right? I never forget it, right? She said it. If she said she lose him, I would never be forgiven, I, and she won't have a son anymore. Yeah, she said that. I was 16. This is a month after she told me I can't see my daughter after she was born. All right. And I was like, the fuck? Because I stayed in my room. Didn't do nothing. Right? Didn't do nothing. Two days later, I went outside. And I'm walking up to KFC like, 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 like we all do. It's Kentucky Fried Chicken in the corner store. So I get my chicken, I come back. I see a buddy of mine back at the ice, you know. This is two days after the fact my mom said this. Two days later, you know, we eating, we eating chicken in the corner of Gerard and St. Bernard. Two cops show up. You know, there was two corrupted little cops. One was Sarge. He was a little fucking dickhead. He fucked with everybody. He was a corrupt cop. Stealing from the drug dealers, all type of shit. <laughs> like, what you two niggas doing? That's what you said, right? Now, don't, don't forget, there was no fucking video cameras back then. Okay? Remember that. Took our chicken, put cups on us, put, put us in the back of their little unmarked car, right? Now across the street from us was a was a graveyard. Took us in the back of the graveyard where all the Milesiums are at and shit like that. One's eating the chicken. One pulls out his what I call the NWA. He said it right to Silly Club, his old black nice stick. They start beating the fuck out of us. Put the cups on. Beating the shit out of us for no fucking reason. While the other ones eat, eating our chicken. No good niggers, shit like this and that. You ain't shit. I can't stand being around you black motherfuckers. You fucking animals. Right? I got to ride around this fucking neighborhood looking at you monkeys every fucking day. I'm 16, right? This is two days after my mom said that she wanted nothing to do with me if, if, if she lose her man. Right? It's two days after. So, after they get done, Take the cuffs off. We fucked up. They take our clothes off. So they take all your clothes. They took a piss on them. They took a shit on them. Yep. Made us walk home naked. So I'm walking home. We had to jump over the fucking gate. Right? Go to my mom. What the fuck happened to you? Right? Cops beat us up. Oh, why are you lying, Lord? She probably lying. Like, I ain't lying. The cop beat it. They just took us over and just beat the shit out of us in the back of the graveyard. All right, I'll take that in the fucking precinct. So we went down to the precinct. Nothing. He's like, all right, we'll look into it. 
You know, don't forget, there's no video cameras back there. You know, they beat the shit out of everybody. Like, we saw so many cops beat up motherfuckers like it was like nothing. Man, mine's the fucking 60s and shit. Well, that's not like the 60s. 60s is way worse. Why am I saying this? That this, this actually happened, right? There's no there's no, no whatever back then, right? No cameras. There's no cameras on every street corner, every pole. Nah. You got to deal with the fuck happens. You know what I mean? Got to deal with what happens. You know what I mean? Especially the cops, it, it was like one was white, one was black. <laughs> Go figure, right? So anyway, after all that happened, uh, you know, I go back to work. I'm all fucked up in the head, but I go back to work, right? Go home, stay stay in my room, you know, whatever. You know, I got me a job at McDonald's. My first job, I'm making like three dollars and eighty-five cents. I'm sorry, three three thirty-five an hour. So I'm thinking, I'm mean, oh, that's great. So while I got that job, right at three thirty-five, my mom says, "You gotta start paying rent." Now I'm fucking sixteen years old. Okay, remember that sixteen fucking years old. I gotta start paying rent. I'm like, how much you want, mom? $50 every time you get a check. Now, my check is only like $129, $130. Okay? I still want to get geared up. I want to show off. You know, everybody got females. Everybody selling drugs. And if you want to get a female back then or be with a girl, you got to be, you got to have some gear. You got to have get gold chains. You got to have something, right? Nope. Don't got none of that shit. So I quit McDonald's, go to Ray Rogers. Big raise, four and a quarter. Oh, shit, I'm making money now, boy. My check's like $150, $160. So I go out, get me a pair of Jordans. I'm getting the fucking two-tone jeans. I'm getting the lead jeans. I'm doing all this shit, right? At the time, I think my mom actually forgot I had to pay rent. I I stopped paying her. She didn't bring it up. I guess she was so much in love with this dickhead. So I ain't fucking saying nothing about it. Fuck it. So as I'm going through that process... You know, making money, you know, go. I finally got my first gold rope, my, 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 my fucking initial ring, two finger ring. You know, the girls back there, they got the bamboo hair, earrings, shit like that. <sighs> then I think I uh, guess I had like, you know, my first uh, this initial date. Okay. Still 16. I guess like first love, first crush, first date, whatever it was, right? <laughs> uh, I was working at Roy Rogers. She came in. She knew a guy that was working there. I said, who that? I was like, that's my boy Lou. We're like, what's going on? So, you know, I mean, like, then we start talking and shit, right? So I'm all, all in this girl. Her name was Rosie. You know what I mean? What she called like a beautiful black queen back then. She was the shit. Like, love this girl. Right. So before we even got, we talk on the phone every day. This and that. So I had big plans. Like, all right, bet. Right. And first of all, right, right. She lived in Jersey, man. Fact. So I had to go over to Jersey to go see her. Right. My grandma lived in Jersey. Right. So I was like, all right, bet. I know. I'm going to come over to Jersey. I'm going to take you on a date. Right. This is like my first official date. Right. I said, all right, bet. I'm all ready. I'm ready to go. I'm in the shower, right? I put the little cassette in my little boom box. I'm playing Run DMC at the time. You know what I mean? I'm getting ready. I'm, I'm, it's now I'm all showered up, ready to go, get out. I put on a little body oil, right, for, for the Muslims that you get on the corner store, shit like that, on, on out there with the Muslims. They were selling the, 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 the body oils and shit. I'm up here pouring it on. Like, I'm, I'm drenched with that shit. I'm smelling all nice, right? I ironed out my my my, my damn uh, two tone uh, my, my two tone guest jeans, right? Pair of uh, black and gray Jordans, right? Uh, I forgot what shirt I had on. I forgot what it was, it, but it was hot, hot though, right? Had my little gold rope. I'm ready, right? I'm ready, you know. And you know, I had my grandma give me a ride to the mall, like pick her up, give her both, because I ain't had no car there. And so I come downstairs. My grandma, I'm like. What are you wearing? Wait, 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 what do you mean what I'm wearing? What are you talking about? Well, I'm ready to go out on my, my first date. Like, I'm ready, right? I'm ready to go, right? 
It's like, no, you ain't wearing that. Like, me, I ain't wearing that. What are you talking about? I ain't wearing that. Like, you're taking a young lady, like, you're courting this lady, young lady. Like, courting? What are you talking about courting? Yeah, you're you're courting her, right? Like, it's like the old back in the day terms, right? Back in the day. Dating, right? You can't show up like that. Like, what's you want me to do? Go upstairs and put on your Sunday best. Like, what? <laughs> I'm not taking you nowhere till you go get changed. I'm like, I can't put on my Sunday best. I'm not going. She wasn't playing. My grandma wasn't playing. I was like, I'm ready to take this girl to movies. Uh, we go walk around the mall, go to arcade. We go chill. We go do, I mean, whatever, right? Big time movie. I forgot what movie it was and shit, right? I'm like, all right, grandma, what the fuck? Like, so, so I call her up. I say, listen, my grandma's made me put on my Sunday best for this shit. She's doing this old school shit. She's like, what? Like, come on, just humor me about this shit. So, okay. So she put on like a blouse and a skirt, right? I got, when I say Sunday best, my fucking church suit, okay? Suit, tie. You know what I mean? I'm surprised she ain't had me with, put on a damn hat with a fucking feather. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's how you supposed to dress when you're courting a young lady that's how all men should be i'm like ah, whatever so we get there right we pull up she said once you get out and go introduce yourself to the parents what <laughs> what the hell is that what introduce myself okay so i go up there i introduce myself to the mom and dad Right, they appreciate it. Dad love them looking at me like I'm crazy in the suit. Like, what the fuck you got a suit for? I just put on regular clothes and come up here. So we walking around the mall. So, so we finally get picked up. We get to the mall. I'm depressed. She depressed. Right, we go on the movies. We ain't say shit. I brought some popcorn, got the sodas and all that shit. Barely ate it. Then we walking around the mall like, excuse me to say this, like two Jehovah Witnesses, like with, with the pamphlets and shit, like giving them out the pamphlets. No, no offense to the Jehovah Witnesses. But like, or, or like an old couple that's like, like back in the twenties. I will put it like that way. So, so excuse my thing. I'm like, what the hell? I'm embarrassed. Everybody laughing at us. They look, looking at us funny, and they laughing and shit. So then she calls her dad to come pick her up. They ain't last that long. So they drop me off first. So she gets out the car with me and she said, Lewis, I can't do this. Like, what are you talking about? I, I can't do this with us. Now, I like this girl. I really like this girl, right? So I was like, all right, I'm trying to fake it off, right? So I go in the house. My grandma was like, how was it? <laughs> so I start bawling, crying, bawling. Like, she broke up with me. She didn't want to be with me no more. Grandma, like, I'll never fall in love again. I was in love and this and that. Ah, yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. My grandma was like, shut up, boy. First and foremost, stop the crying. Second of all, I'm a female. Don't you ever, ever cry in front of a female. You look weak right now. Let's go for an old school black woman. You look weak. Very weak. So don't ever let me see you cry, especially not in front of a female. Don't cry about nothing. You are soft. That will make you weak. That's your told me, right? Man the fuck up. You're going to meet plenty of women in your life. Plenty. If she can't accept you for being respectful, fuck her. But don't ever cry in front of any, any woman or anybody. It shows weakness. Okay? That was her message. And guess what? It never happened after that again. Never cried since. Never cried ever against in front of a woman. She just put it in my brain. It showed weakness. I think that's what a lot of us black men have, or a lot of us men, period. If you cry or get sensitive or whatever, it shows weakness because a lot of us was raised that way. It shows weakness. And when we meet women out there sometimes, they'll say, no, you can show your emotions. You can show tears. And when we do, a lot of women cannot get with that. 
That's just my opinion. But that's where I learned it from. Stay tuned for part three later on. We go again into my senior year where it gets very interesting. Senior year, after graduation, then it starts to go into a whole other different level. All right, guys. Thank you right here for a special edition coming out for Let's Talk About It. This is part two of my story. Stay tuned for future events with part three. If you're liking it, Let's enjoy this ride. This is something about me. All right, guys. I say see you later. Peace.